Yeah. Please fill me with the Ruach HaKodesh, that it may speak your written words with boldness to those who listen. I ask all these things in Yeshua HaMashiach's name. Amen. We'll start with the Shema. Listen and obey. Children of Yah, pay careful attention and respond. Yahweh is our power and authority. Yahweh works in unity with himself. And you shall act upon your love to Yahweh with your power and authority, with your thoughts and mind, with your entire body, and with all the muchness that you have. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now, brothers, I must remind you of the good news which I proclaim to you, and which you received, and on which you have taken your stand, and by which you are being saved, provided you keep holding fast the message I proclaim to you. For if you don't, your trust will have been in vain. For among the first things I passed on to you, on to you was that I also received, namely this, the Messiah died for our sins, in accordance with what the Tanakh says. And he was buried, and he was raised on the third day, in accordance to what the Tanakh says. And he, has seen, he was seen by Kepha, then by the twelve, and then afterwards he was seen by more than five hundred brothers at one time the majority of whom are still alive, though some have died. Later he was seen by Yaakov, then by all the emissaries, and last was seen by me, even though I was born at the wrong time. For I am the least of the emissaries, unfit to be called an emissary, because I persecuted the messianic community of God. But by God's grace, I am what I am. And his grace towards me was not in vain. On the contrary, I have worked harder than all of them, although it was not I, but the grace of God with me. Anyhow, whether I or they, this is what we proclaim, and this is what you believed. But it has not been pro but if it has been proclaimed that the Messiah has been raised from the dead, how is it that some of you are saying there is no such thing as a resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then the Messiah has not been raised. And if the Messiah has not been raised, then what we have proclaimed is in vain. Also, your trust is in vain. Furthermore, we are shown up as false witnesses for God in having testified that God raised up the Messiah, whom he did not raise if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then the Messiah has not been raised either. And if the Messiah has not been raised, your trust is useless. You are still in your sins. Also, if this is the case, those who died in union with the Messiah are lost. If it is only for this life that we put our hope in the Messiah, we are more pitiable than anyone. But the fact is that the Messiah has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a man, also a resurrection of the dead has come through a man. For just as in connection with Adam all die, so in connection with Messiah all will be made alive. But each in his own order. The Messiah is the first fruits, then those who belong to the Messiah at the time of his coming. Then the culmination, when he hands over the kingdom of God the Father, after having put an end to every rulership, yes, to every authority and power, for he has to rule until he puts all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be done away with will be death, for he has put everything in subjection under his feet. But when it says that everything has been subjected, obviously the word does not include God, who, he, who is himself the one subjecting everything to the Messiah. Now when everything has been subjected to the Son, then he will subject himself to God, who subjected everything to him, so that God may be, may be everything in every one. Were it otherwise, what would the people accomplish who are immersed on the behalf of the dead, if the dead are not actually raised? Why are people be immersed, being immersed by them? For that matters, we ourselves, why do we keep facing danger hour by hour, brothers? By the right to be proud, which the Messiah Yeshua our Lord gives, I solemnly tell you that I die every day in my fighting with wild beasts, in Ephesus was done merely on a human basis, would I do it again? What do I gain by it? If dead people are not raised, 
we might as well live by the saying, let's eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Don't be fooled. Bad company ruins good character. Come to your senses, live righteously, and stop sinning. There are some people who lack knowledge of God. I say this to your shame. But someone will ask, in what manner are the dead raised? What sort of body do they have? Stupid. When you sow a seed, it doesn't come alive unless it first dies. Also, what you sow is not the body that will be, but a bare seed of, say, wheat or something else. But God gives it the body he intended it, he intended it for, and to each kind of seed he gives its own body. Not all living matter is the same living matter. On the contrary, there is one kind of human beings, another kind of living matter for animals, another for birds, and another for fish. Further, there are heavenly bodies and earthly bodies, but the beauty of heavenly bodies is one thing, while the beauty of earthly bodies is something else. The sun has one kind of beauty, and the moon another, and the stars yet another. Indeed, each star has its own individual kind of beauty. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. When the body is sown, it decays. When it is raised, it cannot decay. When sown, it is without dignity. When raised, it will be beautiful. When sown, it is weak. When raised, it will be strong. When sown, it is ordinary human body. When raised, it will be a body controlled by the Spirit. If there is an ordinary human body, there is a body controlled by the Spirit. In fact, the Tanakh says so. Adam, the first man, became a living human being. But the last Adam, who has become a live has become a life-giving spirit note however from the body from this that the body from the spirit did not come first but the ordinary human one the one from the spirit comes afterward the first man is of the earth made of dust the second man is from heaven people born of dust are like the man of dust and people born from heaven are like the man from heaven and just as we are born the image of the man of dust so also we will bear the image of the man from heaven. Let me say this, brothers, flesh and blood cannot share in the kingdom of God, nor can something that decays share in what does not decay. Look, I will tell you a secret. Not all of us will die, but we will all be changed. It will take but a moment, the blink of an eye, at the last shofar. For the shofar will sound, and the dead will be raised to, to live forever, and will be changed. For this material, which can decay, must be clothed with imperishability. This which is mortal must be clothed with immortality. When what decays puts on imperishability, and what is mortal puts on immortality, then this passage of the taunt will be fulfilled. Death is swallowed up in victory. Death, where is your victory? Death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the sin draws its power from the Torah. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Yeshua the Messiah. So, dear brothers, stand firm and immovable, always doing the Lord's work as vigorously as you can, knowing that united with the Lord, your efforts are not in vain. Shaul says a lot here. He pulls a few times from the Tanakh, the Old Covenant. First, he puts everything in subjection under his feet. That is taken from Psalms chapter 8, verse 7 or 6, depending on your translation. So let's turn there. Psalm 8. Psalm 8, verse 7. You had him rule what your hands made. You put everything under his feet. Next, let's eat and drink for tomorrow we die. Isaiah 22, 13. Isaiah 22, 13. But instead, one sees joy and celebration... And celebrating, killing of oxen, slaughtering of sheep, eating of meat, drinking of wine. Let's eat and drink now, because tomorrow we'll be dead. Also, 56.12. Come, I'll get some wine. 
will fill up in good, on good, strong liquor. Tomorrow will be like today. In fact, it will be even better. Next, become a living human being. Genesis 2.7 Genesis 2, 7. Then Yahweh God formed a person, Adam, from the dust of the ground, Adama, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, so that he became a living being. Next. Death is swallowed up in victory. Death wears your, wears your victory. Death wears your sting. Isaiah 25, 8 on the first one. Isaiah 25, 8. He will swallow up death forever. Yahweh Elohim will wipe away the tears from every face, and he will remove from all the earth the disgrace his people suffer, for Yahweh has spoken. Also, Hosea 13, 14. Hosea 13, 14. Should I ransom them from the power of Sheol? Should I redeem them from death? Where are your plagues, death? Where are Where is your destruction, Sheol? My eyes are closed with compassion. How can we learn to love our Creator after reading 1 Corinthians chapter 15? I cannot drop the microphone. Shaul makes a bold statement here about the gospel that needs to be thought about deeply. Shaul reminds his readers of the good news which he proclaimed and which they received, which they have taken stand, and by which they are being saved, provided they keep holding fast to the message. Shaul proclaimed to them, Aim to remain in trust with Yeshua, the Messiah, so all will not be in vain. Shaul is clear about the good news again. Messiah died for our sins in accordance with the Tanakh. Messiah was buried. Messiah was raised from the dead on the third day in accordance with the Tanakh. Messiah was seen by Kepha, then by the Twelve, then by more than 500 brothers at one time, then seen by Yaakov, and then all the emissaries, and finally by Shaul. Trust like Shaul, we are who, are we? We are who we are by God's grace. This is what we proclaim. This is what we believe. Trust that Yeshua the Messiah was raised from the dead. Place your hope in the Messiah. Trust that in connection with the Messiah, all will be made alive. Trust that one day we will trust in you. Trust that one day we who trust in Yeshua will be raised up with Yeshua. Aim to live righteously and stop sinning. Aim to find the knowledge of God. Trust that one day our bodies will be sown and then will be raised up and controlled by the Spirit. Trust that we bear the image of the man from heaven. Trust that at the sound of the shofar, we will all be changed. Trust that we will be clothed with immortality, and then death will have no victory and no sting. Trust that we have victory through our Lord Yeshua the Messiah. Aim to stand firm and immovable, Always do the Lord's work as vigorously as we can, knowing that united with the Lord, our efforts are not in vain. How can we love others as Yeshua loves us? We can proclaim the good news with all we meet, knowing that we are united with the Lord. Produce spiritual fruit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, humility, and self-control. How can we bear one another's burdens? We can aim to stand together firm and immovable. End with the Arianic blessing. Yahweh will kneel before you presenting gifts, and he will guard you with a hedge of protection. 
Yahweh will illuminate the wholeness of his being toward you, bringing order, and he will provide you with love, sustenance, and friendship. Yahweh will lift up the wholeness of his being and look upon you and will set in place all you need to be whole and complete. Amen.